Hello friends, welcome to our channel. This is a content based video on an interesting concept in finance called dew point analysis. In this video, let's try to understand this in a practical manner. So what I've done is you have this file also alongside with you. You can download the same onto your laptops for a proper understanding so that you understand this well, this concept. So over here, if you see, there are two companies, BWLD, having their financials here and CBRL having their financials. Now they are both peers, they are French based beer companies and I want to discuss with you as to what actually is this dew point analysis but before that for understanding in a more lucid manner let's discuss certain ratios in detail. First one is something called return on equity. Now what is return on equity? That what is actually the returns which the equity holders have earned on the investments that they have done. The formula is your net profit divided by total shareholder equity. Net profit divided by total shareholder equity that means how much money the shareholders have invested in the company on that how much actually the net profit that they have earned okay second is an asset turnover ratio asset turnover ratio that essentially means I mean the formula is your sales upon your assets that essentially means that for every one rupee of asset you have how much times the sales you have been able to generate ki agar aapke paas ek rupee ka asset hai to aap usse kitna times sales aap generate kar paaye next is your net margin your net margin what is the net margin the formula is your net profit upon your sales or your revenues ki aapne kitna sale kiya uske upar ultimately as equity holder aapko kitna profit you are able to generate your net profit upon your sales next one is your equity multiplier your equity multiplier the formula is your assets upon equity that means for every 1 rupee of equity that you have how much times the assets you have been able to generate ki agar aapke paas 1 rupee ka equity hai usse aap kitna times aap apne assets generate kar paaye okay now you know these three four ratios that you need to understand so that you understand the dew point analysis in a more lucid manner taking an example now i have two beer companies and their peers their peers like coke and pepsi uh, you know, uh, in the same competitive market that they have, and I have the financials which are, which are, uh, you know, in the same template. You know, I mean, it's starting from cell A3. Same thing is starting from cell A3 for CBRL also. So what you can do is you can, you know, watch the video, comprehend it, understand it, and for your own analysis may want to do it again this excel file is there in in the you know in the description below so let me do one thing let me figure out certain ratios here for both the companies and because um, the template is there i can work on both the sheets together how i can do that i can select both the worksheets using the control key i've selected both the worksheets here let me find out their return on equity they return on equity 
So if you know the formula, it is your net income upon my equity. I could have taken average equity also because but I'm using the same formula in both the things. So I'm just taking directly your net income upon your equity just like that for a academic purpose for understanding it. So I'm putting the formula in this sheet and you'll see the same thing will be coming in the second sheet also because I have sort of linked both the sheets together. So I copy the formula and drag it. And because this is coming in a decimal point, let me convert this into a percentage. I said control shift and five. I convert this into a percentage. Control shift five, the shortcut for converting that into a percentage. So this is return on equity for BWLD and this is for return on equity for CBRL. So let me bring both the numbers together here. So this is return on equity for CBRL. Bring it here. So this is for BWLD and this is for CBRL. I'm bringing both the numbers together. Here you go. Like this. Okay. Now, if I'm an investor, I'm wanting to invest in any of these companies here. You know, Prime FAC, what it feels to me is that CBRL is much better because the return that it has generated on its equity is almost 12% and 70% and 40% whatever. Whereas in case of BWLD, it is just 8 to 9% to 14% to 14% as the case is. Now what I'll do is, let me elaborate and in detail this a little further. You know, let me let me have some more ratios uh, understanding. Again, I'll do on, this, on both the sheets together. So I have BWLD here, I have CBRL here. So let me uh, find out some more issues. Let me find out their net margins. Net margin. Uh, so I'm working on BWLD worksheet. So if at all I get the net margins here, the same thing will replicate for CBRL also. So I said net margin for this company is your net income upon your sales. Here you go. I got this in a percentage form. Control Shift 5. Then let me also find out their asset turnover ratio. For asset turnover ratio, I have my as my sales upon the assets. We just saw that formula. That for every one rupee of asset which I have, how much times the sales I have been able to generate. Then let me also find out my equity multiplier the formula is your assets upon your equity that for every one rupee of equity which i have how much times the assets i have been able to generate okay now what I'll do is, I'll bring both the numbers together so that we are able to appreciate the numbers and read them together. So maybe I'll just deselect this sheet here, putting my mouse on a different uh, worksheet and let me bring the numbers of CBRL here. So this is 5% and so on. For a certain number they show, let me bring the numbers for CBRL here. It is linked and dragged. And for equity multiplier, let me link again the numbers and drag. Here you go, like this. So for net margins for BWLD and for CBR, so net margins for BWLD and for CBR and for BWLD and again for CBR. Here you go, like this. Let me just put some coloring here so that it's a little convenient to understand. Now I have both the numbers together. Now let's try to comprehend the numbers. 
Now, you may want to pause this video and let you comprehend your understanding of what you infer from these numbers because this is plain blunt data. How do you read the numbers? That's something that you need to understand. Okay. Let's talk of net margins. Net margin is your net profit upon your sales. Okay. So for every 100 rupees of sale which has happened, as an equity holder, what you are earning in case of BWLT, it's a profit of 4%, 4%, 6%, 6% and so on. Okay, whereas in case of CBRL, it is going from 5% to 4% to 3% to 3%. So in a way, your net margins reflect the actual profits which the equity shareholders have earned and in a way it reflects the real profit from the operations of the firm so in case of in case of bwld the margins are going from four percent to six percent whereas in case of cbrl it's going down from five percent to four percent to three percent okay so in a way operationally bwld is performing better because the margins are going up from four percent to six percent Okay, now if I talk of asset turnover ratio, asset turnover ratio was that for every one rupee of asset which I have, BWLD has been able to generate sales worth 1.44 times. Similarly, in the over the last five years, it's been able to generate sales worth 1.73 times. Whereas that in case of CBRL. The asset turnover ratio is 1.43, 1.3, 1.8, 1.8, 1.9. And for every one rupee of asset which I, you have, you have been able to generate sales worth 1.9 times. So slightly, slightly, CBRL has performed better. If I look into uh, the asset turnover ratio of BWLD and CBRL, so CBRL has slightly performed better. That's what you aim for. And if I talk of equity multiplier, it's 1.39 and 1.39 and 1.39 and 1.42, it's almost even stables. It's not changed much. But in case you talk of CBRL, it's grown from 1.76 to 12.5 to 14 to 9. Which has performed better? Is it BWLD or is it equity multiplier for CBRL? which has performed better. To make you more understand this, let me write the formula of equity multiplier. Equity multiplier is your assets upon your equity. So if I talk of BWLD here, it is 1.39 is to 1. It's changed to 1.42 is to 1. That for every one rupee of equity, you have been able to generate assets worth 1.39 times, which has changed to 1.42 times. In case of CBRL, this number has changed from 1.76 is to 1 to almost 9 is to 1. Your denominator is the same, your numerator has grown by more than 5x. That means your equity is the same but the assets have increased by more than 5 times. If your denominator is the same, if equity is same and if your numerator has grown by more than 5 times, that essentially means what? Your asset base has grown by 5 times, keeping your equity base same, essentially meaning that you have used debt to fund your assets. I mean, if you see the base in case of BWLD, it's almost even stables. But in case of CBRL, it's grown five, more than five times. And you're using debt to fund your assets. If you're using debt to fund your assets, to buy your assets, you have gone for a huge capital expansion. Why do you go for a capital expansion? Because you wanted to grow your business. 
and if your asset base has increased by more than five times, your asset turnover ratio should have been significantly higher than what it is over here. I mean, if you talk of BWLD, it's almost same. Same. I mean, if you read asset turnover ratio with your equity multiplier, it's 1.4, 1.5, 1.7, 1.7. It's almost even Stevens. Same with equity multiplier. But if you talk of, if you read asset turnover ratio with equity multiplier for CPRL, I mean, your asset base has increased by more than five times. More than five times. You have taken huge debt to fund your assets but your asset turnover ratio is almost same essentially meaning your assets have not been effectively utilized if your assets have not been effectively utilized you've done huge capex and you have taken debt that essentially means you're also supposed to pay interest on it and because you're supposed to pay interest on it your margins are going down from 5% to 4% to 3%. Effectively indicating that your assets are not being effectively utilized. So let's read these three together in conjunction. You've taken huge debt to fund your assets. At the same time, your assets are not being effectively utilized. And at the same time, because your assets are not being effectively utilized, your margins are getting impacted because of this. Right? I asked you to calculate three ratios. First was net margin. Net margins, the formula is net profit upon sales. Second was a certain number ratio. The formula is sales upon assets. Third is equity multiplier the formula was asset upon equity let's multiply all three of them so this goes this goes what remains is your net profit upon equity which is nothing but your return on equity your return on equity when we were initially doing the calculations we figured out that the return on cbr or return on equity of cbrl is much better it's 12 percent to 22 percent to 73 percent whereas in case of bwld it is 8 percent to 9 percent to 14 percent so initial impression was that cbrl is doing better and this is this is this is what is coming from the calculations from the ratio that we have done you have just broken it down. Just broken it down into net margins, into asset turnover ratio, into equity multiplier. This is giving me a completely different picture. Ultimately, the capex has to justify the sales and the subsequent profitability. Because, because this granular breakup is giving me a different picture. This breakup was devised by a person called DuPont. Henceforth, this is DuPont analysis of ROE. The capex has to justify the sales and the subsequent profitability. Okay, Because if I just look into return on equity on the face of it, it looks CBRL is doing much better, whereas if you have just granularly breaking, breaking it down into three day shows in a three step viewpoint analysis, you know, this has given me a completely different picture. So I hope you appreciate and understand what is a viewpoint analysis to summarize this. Right. So let's understand this better, uh, you know, just to summarize and conclude this. Viewpoint analysis is an approach that can be used to analyze return on equity. Right? And breaking return on equity into components, parts, not only allows the investors to determine what kind of return on equity is being generated by the company, but also to examine the quality of that return, as well as which financial levers management is pulling to create it.
because the capex has to justify the sales as an understanding of this you know in return on equity what i'm actually doing is net income upon revenues gives you your net margins revenues upon assets your asset on over ratio into your equity multiplier i hope you have understood the concept of return on equity with viewpoint analysis and in case you have found this video useful you know press the like button share with your friends and your colleagues so that they can also understand this in a more lucid manner thanks for being patient thanks for watching and do do it on your own so that you are also able to comprehend the numbers because ultimately if you want to be a good analyst you got to have an art of reading the numbers getting the story line behind the numbers thanks for watching